Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. And in this episode, I want to discuss instances when artists post uh, content that's related to real world stuff, especially stuff that's grave and how that, and more importantly, why it tends to backfire, okay? Um, because recently there was something that I, I saw um, as on TikTok and in news articles. I won't say what it is because I don't want to kind of perpetuate it further, but it got me thinking about kind of the larger side of this. Now, before I fully dive in though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right when I put them out. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So, let's get into this, right? There's oftentimes things that that, that happen, right? Um, whether it be, you know, the, the most recent sort of examples that I can think of is, um, you know, COVID and COVID lockdowns when it initially first started. Um, Posting uh, January 6th, that's an example, the Ukraine war, uh, and just mass shootings in America, right? Uh, specifically in, in recent time, the Uvalde shooting, right? Uh, not that they're not all horrible, but that one in particular is just egregiously heinous, given the uninvolvement of the police. But anyway, so... The starting point for me is, and a big thesis of what I believe in, is that art has a place in the world, and art is needed in the world, right? Uh, art is the mirror to us as a society. Art is the lie that helps expose the truth. But I think there's a, there needs to be a different approach when working on some of this stuff. And I think the reason why people get this sort of backlash when they post about these things is primarily because they don't point out anything new, right? So let's use Uvalde as an example. If you just essentially, as an artist, make a song, make a video, whatever it is, and essentially say that school shootings are bad, then realistically you've not really dug into the deeper truth of, of art, right? I mean, you're not adding anything to the conversation. It becomes a no-duh sort of situation. So that's sort of number one. And because of that, it leads into number two, where it's like, okay, you're just now using this as a money or attention grab. Now, whether or not that is actually true, this is the perception of it, right? Because, yeah, there, there, there's no value beyond the surface level. And so it's like, yeah, people, you know, people question of like, well, what if, if, what is the motive, right? And there's a difference, like when, when I'm talking about this, there's a difference between kind of going online, let's say like trying to make sense of it and so forth versus like actually creating a piece of, you know, art that like, you know, a song, a poem, uh, whatever else, like, those things, when you like call something art, at least in my mind, and I think audience's mind, it implies that thought went into it. And when there, as I said, when, when nothing's beyond that, and, it, and especially when it's just like this parody or, or jokey side of it, then it comes off, as I said, this need for money or attention and look at me, right? You're, you're taking advantage of the situation. And thirdly, it, it doesn't really showcase, like especially if, if, if you have no 
nothing to offer beyond the surface level of this is bad, right? You know, I'll just keep using the Evaldi example like school shootings are bad. Someone should do something like it. It's like, okay, no, duh. Uh, A, you're not offering any solutions. And B, that's not real, act, that's not taking action. Like someone posting something online, creating this little piece of content that, that doesn't do that, right? And, you know, something like, let's say, this is a very, um, you might be familiar with it, maybe not, but American History X. It's a Edward Norton film, and he essentially plays a neo-Nazi that gets out of prison. And because of his actions, his family is affected uh, by the choices he made from years prior in becoming a neo-Nazi, right? And in that way, it forces you to think about anti-Semitism, the cycle of violence, um, you know, how we affect our families inadvertently, how hate affects our family, and just other people, and so forth, right? Like, there's, there's something beyond of just neo-Nazis are bad. And so that's what I'm sort of getting at. And I, and, and so at least in that sense, it, it shifts a consciousness. Whereas I think if you look at the backlash of a lot of celebrities that have put out content, and you know, I both mean that like traditional celebrities that you might see in like, let's say People Magazine or whatever, as well as social media influencers, It, that stuff comes off as it isn't real activism and it's just a platitude, right? It doesn't do anything. And so I think that's the aspect of it. Now, from a creator standpoint, I understand where it comes from. You know, all of us as human beings, quite frankly, you know, the, the world is constantly changing, especially in the past few years. And we're trying to understand our place in it. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to stay afloat <laughs> during all this. And that becomes very difficult, right? And so how the hell are you supposed to have anything to say <laughs> in the midst of all this chaos and confusion? Well, unfortunately, that's kind of like the social contract of an artist, is to be able to parse that out in a way that's simplified and not necessarily easy to understand, but, 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 but create some meaning for the audience. And in a world where, as creators, there's this seemingly constant demand through society or internal and or their, uh, a mix of thereof to, you know, always be putting out st uh, stuff because if you're not, then you become irrelevant. And especially now it's like just, you know, with the influx of so much stuff everywhere, it's like, how do you break through the noise? And it's like, you got to just be doing anything and everything, right? And it's not that it's not well-intentioned, but in doing so, A, it creates a burnout. And by being burnt out, you know, you're, not, uh, you're not getting the right rest to recharge your mental capacity, let alone physical. And so, you know, the work suffers. And then you also make not so good decisions about certain things. And, and you know, rather than have that wherewithal to kind of t take a pause and be able to reflect upon something more meaningful, you're just like, no, I, I, there's this need, like, I, I need to say something about X, Y, and Z because it's in the news cycle. And so, okay, cool. Here's the best that I can come up with. So let me, let me do that. So I understand that. But one of the reasons I'm talking about it is so we become more aware of that and hopefully avoid that. Listen, I, I'm as guilty of it as anyone else. 
you know, I basically post an episode every weekday. And it's like, okay, by hell or high water, what am I going to talk about? You know, I got to put out something, that sort of thing, right? And not every episode is as top notch as others, you know, um, by definition, most episodes in terms of what I create, you know, just on my own metric scale will be average episodes for me, right? That's what makes, that's the definition of average, right? So, you know, very few episodes will be my best episodes and there'll be a few that are terrible, but most of them will be average. And there's something for that, right? Um, that, that discipline to create and create. But as I also talk about in my very first episode that I ever did, practice makes permanent. And so for me, I always try to, even if it isn't in the best way, to have this presence of mind to be in the moment and do the best job that I can, right? Don Miguel Ruiz, he has the, the five agreements. Most people only know the four, but they're, you know, there are five that he talks about. And one of them is always do your best. And listen, your best is going to fluctuate. If you're more tired, your best is going to be lower than when you're rested. But in whatever circumstance you find yourself in, if you just do your best, then you can't really be mad at yourself. And another one that ties into it is like be impe in impeccable with your word, right? And for me, I certainly try to combine both as much as I can. Am I always successful? No, but to the best that I can, right? In any given situation, I try to exemplify all those and have thoughtful opinions about whatever it is I'm talking about. And in this case, ways to prevent, you know, the coming off insensitive when addressing hard topics as an artist. And so I hope that resonates with you. You know, I know it's a very heady subject. I know it's a deep subject and there's many ways I can continue to go about this, but I think as just an overall notion and the sort of bullet points as I see them, I think this paints the picture, right? And I guess if there's any final thing is that it's audiences are smart and, you know, if we want them as fans of what we create, we have to respect them. I think that's a good way to look at it. And that requires work, right? So anyway, I hope that sits with you and gives you something to think about and hopefully it benefits you. As always, if you have thoughts or questions, I welcome them. Comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Spitek. I would love to have a deeper, more meaningful conversation about this topic with you. Likewise, if you enjoy what I do and think you might benefit from direct interactions, well, there is, of course, my coaching. I would be happy to work with you. The link is provided down below. If you'd prefer to sort of test the waters as it may be, well, that's what my Patreon is for. Patreon.com slash Tech. There are various tiers of support with varying levels of reward, right? The, the greater the financial, uh, you know, out, uh, tier that you use to support me, well, you know, the more you get, right? But there's a lot of great stuff there and we certainly can interact in the various options that are available to you. So I, I thoroughly enjoy that, like our monthly Q&A uh, sessions. Those are really, really fun. Uh, and likewise, you know, as an artist myself, I've created books and movies and merchandise and stuff like that. Uh, you are welcome. And in fact, I would encourage you to check that out as well. Um, it would mean the world to me. And it also does support this because it's a symbiotic relationship by that stuff being essentially self-sustaining. I get to create more of it. And by creating more of it, I learn lessons and can share them freely here with you. So that way your journey can be at least a little bit easier as an artist. That is the hope. Anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I hope to see you next time.